Welcome. It's season two of so I'm going to stop you right there. You're gonna I, it's need, season two of you're going to need more confidence. Like you are the host of the show. We look to you for direction. I can do this. I can do this. Um, OK. Hi. Welcome to season two of I'm 40 percent podcast queer Futurama recap podcast starring Jinx Monsoon. That's what it says here. Starring Jinx Monsoon. I feel like you're playing at the the job that you're doing like uh, you you still got to take yourself um, seriously here i i get what you're doing right now but it can no you're being like you're being like oh i'm too cool to host a podcast i'm not, I'm I'm not too cool like, i'm not too cool for anything i'm sorry i'm just i want to get back to my real life <laughs> taking it from me for so long take it again take it again Jesus Hi, Christ. welcome to I'm 40% Podcast. It's a queer Futurama podcast. It's so funny. Uh, Jinx Monsoon is the host. Hello, Jinx. How are you? I'm great. And what's your name? Oh, it's Nick. <laughs> and today's guest is none other than my drag mother, Peaches Christ. Hello, Peaches. Oh, hi. Um, not sure I needed to hear all that. <laughs> well... Uh, I think maybe you're new to podcasts. This seems pretty normal for me. Actually, I'm a (laughs) professional. And when we have guests on the Midnight Mass podcast, which is the best podcast, really, (laughs) we treat them with professional courtesy and Uh, rehearse our bits before we invite them on. Wow, must be These aren't bits. Yeah, (laughs) we're just living our lives. And they're pretty bits of shit. (laughs) <laughs> peaches <laughs> um peaches first yes. and foremost congratulations on that on that podcast you plugged right on in there um, thank you nextly Tuli, um have you ever watched futurama before is this your first time watching it so i'm i'm embarrassed to um admit to you but i figured well i bet i better come out uh, right from the start, come out of the closet and say, I think in preparation for your podcast, that might have been the first time I've ever watched a full episode of Futurama. Um, so I've definitely seen like I'm a, I was aware of what it was um, and sort of in a pop culture sort of way. I knew, you know, maybe what one or two of the characters were. But watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, I've never seen this before. <laughs> so that was my first time is watching this singular episode. It is amazing you like to it? me how many of our guests have never watched it before. But yeah, did you like it? <laughs> I did. And I and you know, I, I knew I probably would because I am a Simpsons fan and have always admired the Simpsons. I'm certainly not one of those um, you know, uh, obsessed fans, but definitely am someone who really respects what what uh the Simpsons achieved. And so knowing who created Futurama, I kind of assumed I would like it, but I, I actually really liked it. I thought it was very funny. And, and of course, much in the same way that I like The Simpsons it has the same value. I wouldn't say I'm an, I'm an obsessed um, Simpsons fan, but I do pretty much quote it constantly. If, if ever I'm just saying a sentence that sounds written but it's coming out of nowhere. It's probably just me pulling a Simpsons quote into my daily life. And really the only person who ever can keep up with me in quoting the Simpsons or Futurama is Nick, but also my music partner, Major Scales. I don't know. That what you did the... while I was in the tube. You just quoted Nerd Futurama alert. with Major Scales. We're not going to get anywhere <laughs> if you talk about the, the tube Constantly, I'm deeply okay. <laughs> traumatized by being in the tube. <laughs> Listen, not in front of our guests. Um, but I don't know what the through like the 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 common thread is between major scales, Nick Sahoya, and myself, but there's something nerds. there's something that links yeah. us oh. gay nerds. Yeah, but you're a gay nerd, and that's you, true. But, but I guess there's gay nerds in different ways. You're also old. 
Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> very true. Um, Which is, can I ask you a sincere I, question? I actually have a, I have a theory about what it is. Yes. Although you it doesn't, first and then doesn't really fit with major as much. <laughs> But watching it, I was like, as you know, I'm sober. Uh, watching it, I was like, oh, I bet I'd really like this high. Like, I used to get <laughs> high. And when I would get high, I would want to watch The Simpsons. Like, I could just sit around all night, you know, high, smoking weed and eating jelly beans or whatever and watching The Simpsons. And that was like a great night in. <laughs> so watching Futurama, especially this episode i was like oh i bet it's really fabulous you know if if you're if you're high and just kind of relaxing at home well peaches is famous for if we get high around peaches peaches then believes that she's high she thinks mm. she gets a contact high not from being in the same room as us smoking just like being around high no people. it's because you inconsiderately blow your weed smoke this in my is, face that is that has never happened. I have never blown <laughs> okay, weed smoke that is, in your Okay, face. that is, uh, that is true. But there was one time <laughs> where I definitely got sort of a contact buzz because I was in your apartment in Seattle for far too long. It was a and, really small apartment. <laughs> and you guys were, I mean, it was like you you were ripping bong hits and uh, <laughs> the whole the whole room like filled up with smoke and I was like, "Huh, I wonder if I'll if I'll feel this at all." And then, like an hour later I was like, "Oh, yeah." There, there is such a thing as getting a contact high. You do know that, and right? And then you uh, relapsed yeah. and had a very dark couple of months. That's I right. I went out, found some <laughs> meth, spent three <laughs> nights at Steamworks. Two hours and a hot Club box. Z was the one closest oh, yeah. to Club, Club, Club Z. Z. Even better, I, 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 I managed to escape certain death spending three nights at Club Z. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that we've veered Peaches. wildly off topic, <laughs> wh what's your question, Nick? <laughs> Did you ever get a contact high from being around all those high actors at your haunted house? Because they're all doing dubs. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, 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 I uh, went, went out to Mint Plaza um, after the show the other night and they were all out there like smoking up a storm. Um, and I said, oh, you get, you guys are celebrating. And they were like, yeah. And I felt like the, the, just even outside, you know, I could I could feel like if I hung out with them for too long, I was going to get a contact high. But I'll say this. If they are smoking before the show, I certainly don't know it because this oh, you show didn't know when I did it. Well, this show is very well. That's the thing. I don't care if I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it's more like if I know then it's a problem because it means I've noticed it in your performance or whatever. Um, I do think that a lot of um, of it is medicinal and I think it actually helps people's performances, unlike, you know, drinking or something. Um, so, yeah, I don't care, but it, it, it's more like if, if, if it, you know, fucks up your performance, then maybe I would step in and be like, hey, you should knock it off. Yeah, I can't imagine how being stoned would have affected Nick's performance when he just ran around naked and then got his dick cut <laughs> off in your show. Um, no one cut off my dick. <laughs> <laughs> if I were directing, but um, if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, Peaches Christ uh, curates a haunted house experience at the San Francisco Mint every year. And after, um, after a hiatus due to the pandemic, you're back at it with something. The Immortal Reckoning. The Immortal Reckoning, that's it. Yeah, I, I thought it was like the reckoning of the immortals, you know, you thought it was the whole wrecker. <laughs> no, it's the immortal reckoning. And uh, this show, um, more than the, the other two, which were were more of a haunted attraction with with scenes. Um, this show is definitely more immersive theater. And I was very, very nervous about it because of the script. It's very ambitious. There's characters that you see throughout the entire experience and it's got a beginning, middle and end. And I'm really relieved because we got reviewed by all the theater critics. And um, uh, besides one review, uh, they've overwhelmingly been positive. So what, one, show... re one review that was written by a Mennonite who had never <laughs> seen a boob before. It wasn't <laughs> written. This this. So one of the editors, one of the editors it was got, screamed into the nights. 
<laughs> no, it went, the, 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 the writer refused to review it saying it was beneath them <laughs> and that it was, you know, vile and reprehensible. And they should never have been assigned that show. And, you know, the editor got back to our publicist and was like, I am so sorry. I've never had in the history of assigning critics to have a, had a response like this. Um, <laughs> but then I looked her up on the internet. She's like a little old lady. Why would you, why would you, <laughs> and of course all, all the cast remember her. Like she was there with a little old man and you know, the, the cast were like, yeah, it was super awkward. They were horrified. They hated it. It was so obvious. They hated it, you know? Well, to me and uh, knowing you personally, I feel like as a as a horror director and a haunted house curator, I feel like you probably wear that with a with honor. The fact that a little old lady refused to <laughs> review your morally reprehensible, interactive haunted house yes, theater experience. Um, we can't get into it because we don't have the time, but I did yeah. play a part one night um, of of your show um, before the pandemic. And it was arguably one of the hardest, <laughs> hardest acting challenges I've ever faced. Maybe I should have been stoned and that could have changed everything. But today we are talking about <laughs> episode one of season two of Futurama, one of mine and Nick's favorite shows. Um, Season two is when um, any show really starts to get to find its voice. It it had all of season one to establish itself and lay down the plots and the premises and the characters and and plant the seeds for a very um, enjoyable season two. Futurama, the season two, I think, is when Futurama becomes Futurama, really. Um, and the animation gets much better because they have a budget now. So also they don't have to do the assets. They already drew it once so they can use it. <laughs> That's true, because once they draw it, then they can put that energy towards something else because they don't need to do character design anymore. Yeah. Well, in any case, this is episode one. <laughs> it's a cold open. <laughs> is it a cold open if it's related to the plot or does it only count as a cold open if it's like an unrelated bit? I don't know. Maybe Peaches, you're a film. Yeah, you're filmstress. a filmmaker. Have, What's a cold I have, open? I have no idea. I think that's not a film term. I think that might be a TV term. James Bond has cold opens. What he does that mean? Little, I, I don't he goes even know on a little means. mission before the credits. Oh, is that what it means? A cold yeah. open. So it's like a, a little uh, something that happens before the plot gets started. Is that what it means? <laughs> I I don't you, know. You guys are like tossing around to these the words. You don't even know or... what they mean. It's the little it's the little scene vignette that happens before the opening credits, before the uh, show title okay. plays. OK, and so sometimes it's okay. related to the plot and sometimes it's not. This time it was. And they um, returned from Cannibal on Cannibal on. It Bender was not a pleasant experience. Yeah, Bender liked the food, <laughs> but the humans didn't like it that much. They're they're ready to quit, and then the professor says, um, "You know, it, I'll just have to hire a new crew to go on the company vacation." And it's revealed that they're going to go on a luxury cruise, spaceship cruise, of the new most extravagant spaceship that's ever been <laughs> built, the Titanic. And it doesn't even have like a spacey twist on it. It's just the Titanic. Not space Tanic. Not. <laughs> it's not like the. <laughs> Titanium Anic or the, yeah, the Titanic 2000. It's just the Titanic. Um. <laughs> and it makes sense, I guess. Like, I don't know what ship crashed like 2000 years ago, but Fry would. <laughs> Why doesn't he go, oh, there was a ship in a very popular movie called that in my time. Because <laughs> Fry's an idiot. I know, um, it's fine. What are your first impressions of the characters, Peaches? Um, did you recognize... Katie Seagal voicing yes. Leela. <laughs> yes, and I and I knew that she played that character, and that's probably what uh, the 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 extent of you know what I knew um, uh, going into it. Um, I uh, I liked them all. I mean, I was I, you know it's funny. I was trying to figure them out, and I was trying to figure out who if they're all um, regular characters, um, which I guess they probably are. If it's anything like the Simpsons universe, where you've got this massive universe, but even characters who are really um, small in scope as far as, you know, how they play into the, the the main family's lives, they are part of that world. And you do see them 
you know, over and over again. So I was yeah. thinking, okay, I bet all these people are part of this, you know, world and the leads are the robot and the guy with uh, red hair and, um, <laughs> and Katie Seagal, uh, you know, I was trying, I was trying to, and the old guy, you know, I was trying to figure, <laughs> I was trying to figure, to figure it all out, you know, kind of put it all together. Um, but I thought that they were all very funny, you know, like, yeah. And enjoyable. And, um, you know, I, I, I was of course watching it going like, Oh, like I bet Matt Grona work grew up, you know, I don't know how old he is, but maybe he's like my age and, you know, uh, grew up watching reruns of the Jetsons, you know, and it, yeah. it feels so much yeah. like um, and he was like, I'll do the Jetsons, but I'll make it funny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, it feels like it's the Jetsons, but just with, you know, a, a, a witty, clever script. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the Jetsons scripts, which were just unwatchable. Well, um, this was, this no, was definitely a um, show that an adult could laugh at. Like I found myself laughing mm -hmm. and, and had references um, that were adult, right? Like, you know, it, even just the, the Titanic references to the movie and things, um, you know, a kid wouldn't get them. Whereas the, the Jetsons, the TV show was for kids. Yeah. I well, feel like back then people were just so impressed to see like moving pictures that, and they would clap their hands and eat their popcorn and they would love it. <laughs> But don't you also feel like animation wasn't for adults originally? Like, you know, it was kind of created by Walt Disney and the in, in Hanna-Barbera and these companies who really saw it as like a kid's art form. It was designed for children, made for children, whereas that is completely changed in large part. I think The Simpsons had a lot to do with that. Yeah, well, we and discussed I think that Flintstones the legalization is, uh, of weed. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Flintstones is kind of the original cartoon for adults because it was just the honeymooners, but in the past. And then the Jetsons, I guess, by nature of being a spinoff, was also for adults. Well, I, I remember watching the Flintstones as a kid and thinking, like, I liked it because it was cartoons, but not getting much of what was happening in the show. And then I watched Judy some had a cool outfit. Flint. Well, that's the Jetsons. We're are we talking about the Flintstones or the oh, they're all they're the, the same, same crap. Anyway, back to Futurama. Remember when they met each other? <laughs> We're at like the ship, and Zap Brannigan is going to be the captain of the ship. I don't know how Zap Brannigan keeps getting any kind of work as a captain because he's because he's a cis white male jinx and that is that must be the world. only thing that must be the only thing because he's constantly committing crimes against humanity <laughs> as, as a ship captain but somehow he's the most decorated uh space naval officer um and they always list his accomplishments this time he had taken down the the planet of retire on or <laughs> the retiree, the retiree planet. people of the assistant living nebula <laughs> what threat could they have been posing were they were they trying were they trying to collect everyone else's social security <laughs> like what hmm. what threat were these Christmas retirees the ship, yeah. but instead of a champagne bottle it's leonardo dicaprio's head in a jar yeah and they definitely drew leonardo dicaprio at like peak DiCaprio Young. years if yeah. they if they had only known what he would devolve into <laughs> not dad bod DiCaprio years. Leonardo di dad bod trio um they're getting on the ship and Zap is being <laughs> sleazy as usual and Leah Leela is forced to pretend she has a fiance she looks at the crew and she settles on Fry because Zoidberg and the professor are hideous <laughs> and Fry's just gross <laughs> Is Fry the generally the protagonist of the show? Yeah. yeah, we're watching the we're experiencing the future through Fry's eyes. Fry, okay. Fry was frozen in the year two thousand and unfrozen. Don't talk about freezing tubes. It's it's really it's bringing me back. Well, aren't you so glad that you finally have something that happened to you? Now, <laughs> no. now um, Fry's unfrozen in the year 3000 and he's experiencing the future um, and we're we're seeing the world through his eyes. Um, now you know, that that actually I guess was I supposed to figure that out because <laughs> it's if, you, if, if you don't if, sometimes well yeah. it's the kind of thing in a lot of shows that it, it, you know they in the 80s and even the 90s they would have set it up in the credits so that you would have seen some sort of opening title sequence oh, yeah, like that would have nanny. explained that yeah 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 
But so I did. <laughs> but like they all did that, right? Like about uh, Frank and you know, frozen. What about different strokes? You know, you get the whole plot of you know them <laughs> them being adopted or whatever. You know. So there should have been lyrics to the opening song. It should have been like, uh, I, was I was frozen in the year two thousand. Now I mean, he's thought out again, and he's gonna do some space <laughs> stuff. Here we go now. <laughs> I'm not saying that there should have been. I'm just saying. Um, oh, okay. This is like if you're picking up the show. So, and you haven't watched the first season, you know, you may not have have gotten that. I I, I didn't get it. You know, what's so funny is it's one of the only episodes where they don't just have a moment of Fry or someone near Fry saying, Fry, since you were frozen in the year 2000, right, <laughs> like episode two of season two, they really hammer that point home again. Um, it's just uh, so funny that this is one of the only episodes where it's not brought up constantly. Right. Um, now. We the meet La Barbara actual, for the first time. We get some Hermes backstory. We get a lot of Hermes backstory in in this. Um, we meet Hermes' wife, La Barbara, who is a goddess. Um, and here's she the even talk in the episode. She has like three. Yeah, lines. she talks a lot. She talks <laughs> a lot. Um, but we uh, <laughs> we here's one plot hole for me. Peaches isn't gonna get any of this because she doesn't know the show as well. Nope. But so you know. Okay, so the professor has a suite. La Barbara and Hermes have a suite. Zoidberg, of all people, has a marble <laughs> aquarium well, that he's staying he's in. He's best friends from the war. Yeah, okay. And he's a doctor. But then everyone else on the crew is staying in the, like, <laughs> the budget servant's quarters. The fiesta quarters. deck. <laughs> the fiesta deck. Now, one, I don't get why... Zoidberg, yeah, I mean, okay, so the the professor and Zoidberg have an old friendship, so that's why he got a good room. But Amy, Amy is wildly rich. Amy could rich. afford to get her own. Why wouldn't room, yeah. she have paid for an upgrade? She would and not. Her parents have... are on the ship. <laughs> why doesn't she just go stay in their room? <laughs> um, Peaches, if you had to stay in the the quarters that they have to stay in, wh- how would you spend your? You've done some cruise ships. With you. I did yeah. one with you. Um, well, I mean, if, if someone was going to give me one of those big fancy suites, that would be lovely, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I actually, actually kind of have to say, like, I, I don't know that I'd want to stay there, but I am sort of fascinated by like the the, the behind the scenes operations of a cruise. And, you know, <laughs> and, and then also with the movie Titanic, sort of like the idea of being one of the uh, uh, staff members. It, like I romanticize sort of that experience it's probably really not uh very romantic <laughs> um but I, I i don't mind the idea of like experiencing it because you know they have like their own clubs and bars and things yeah down there and you know you remember that <laughs> scene in Titanic? yeah 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 like it's crazy so he I- covers up like 15 cruise murders every year oh yeah. that's fierce that's, that's like a real thing you can <laughs> what yeah because cruise people just murders? get murders yeah, people get thrown overboard. Oftentimes it's crew members, but sometimes passengers. And wow. like in a there's fit no of, laws out in a there. fit of rage. Like, I don't know. Like they just know they can get away with shit out there. And like no one even probably realizes the person's gone until they've sailed Aren't like a hundred. Cameras though. I mean, how do they not have cameras? No, it's the it's a no one should ever go on a cruise ship. <laughs> So I'm never scary. going again. I mean, for for different reasons, but you know, you're <laughs> just like you're you're just driving it home for me um as what they're going reasons? well i just hate cruises i don't uh, know okay. um, well, fair enough <laughs> Drag as they're race going fan. down the floors <laughs> as they're going down the floors one floor is just devoted to laundry how does anyone get in or out of that floor <laughs> i thought that was so funny that it was just a washing machine floor <laughs> washing machine floor um back in the main okay well then we get zap brannigan and kiff kiff is um zap brannigan's um uh, number one zap is bored with the cruise schedule with the with the flight pattern of the cruise (laughs) schedule so decides he's going to take them on an adventurous romp through the solar system um one of my favorite lines is he (laughs) he says uh kiff is like well if we follow that path Captain, we'll go straight into a swarm of asteroids and comets. Zap- comets. I think he said They're asteroids icebergs. or comets. Well, okay. Ah, uh, yes, the <laughs> icebergs <laughs> of space. The sky or whatever. Yeah. 
if we go zipping back and forth between <laughs> comments, we'll get some kind of gravitational boost or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so Zap Brannigan with like zero reason decides to divert their course and take them on a dangerous path through a swarm of asteroids slash comets. They're Meanwhile, comments. the cruise goes on. The cruise goes on as planned. Bender well, meets. Yeah, the we Rose, should talk about that. The the Rose parallel. Uh, I Her love that they the just... Countess de la Roca, and that's like a <laughs> Spanish name, but she seems just British. But maybe she's like the product of you know when like a British family like marries a Spanish family. To you win. can say colonialism. Yeah, <laughs> but it's robot colonialism in the year three thousand. <laughs> yeah, which is confusing. I'm maybe so she was just built in Spain. Maybe it's like Bender's situation. They're both we know, Latino. <laughs> we knew that there was going to be a Titanic parallel because they're on the Titanic. They weren't going to not do the, the movie parody. Um, I'm glad they chose to do it with robots because basically they just take the actual plot of the movie Titanic and then just add in some robot lingo. Uh, <laughs> just add right in before some. that, though, Bender is cheating in the casino and his cheating unit malfunctions. <laughs> and he says, hey, my cheating unit malfunctioned. You have to give me a do over. And the guy no, says, no, you only get three do overs. House <laughs> rules. <laughs> That's an example of the writing that I love so much on Futurama show. is, you know, just everything's so absurd. It, like the future is just such a weird place. Um, Amy's well, parents and, and are there. The observational, ahead, I was going to say the observational sort of comedy there is that some of the comedy is just in how uh, it has nothing to do with the future. It, it's more just uh, absurdist, right? Like, uh, yeah. like you know, this sort of they take what we all accept as, as normal and either comment on it or you know make it ridiculous. And I, they do that so well. Like that kind of writing is actually not easy. Um, and I, I, I love like that joke. That line is great, and we don't even know exactly why it's so great it's just funny this concept of do-overs and gambling because we know that's <laughs> like that 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 defeats the whole idea of gambling you know and it's just very funny i think i think what futurama masters is the broken expectation you know um building on something that we think we know the answer to we think we know what the next line is going to be and then they give us an absurd version and break our expectations so you know the um, the dealer is like, no, you can't have, we think he's going to say you can't have a do over, but he says you're only allowed three do overs and Bender has hit his limit. Um, that's for me why Futurama is one of my favorite things is the, the writing is so clever. It's simple, stupid jokes, but they, they land every time. Amy's Nick, I see you looking there. at your notes like a little <laughs> nerd. You want to you want to take us on the next? <laughs> do, you, do you not, Nick, have an example of that kind of writing? I mean, I actually and all, I all of those say notes you're joke flipping and through. Jigs interrupted me and kind of uh, didn't say it right, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever. You're still recovering from that. The line is sorry, the house limit is three do over. <laughs> <laughs> I got the gist. <laughs> it was fine. You just made a thing of it. So I had to just yeah. put all the cards on the table. Gambling. Well, I heard you bring I heard you bringing up Amy's parents. So we kind of glossed over one of the B plots is that of course Zap Brannigan and Leela had a, tr a romantic tryst in the past. Um, Leela is disgusted by Zap Brannigan because after sleeping with him, she realized what a horrible, awful human being he is. Um, so she's like pretending that guy used to fuck. Remember him, Peaches? Which, Which one? Which guy? <laughs> I fucked a lot of assholes in my time. The um, slapper. <laughs> <laughs> um Le uh, Leela is using Fry um to pretend to be her fiance so Zap Brannigan will back off but now Amy's overbearing parents are there and um and I I I love Amy's mother's line is something like um why don't you have a boyfriend or at the very least a man you could use to give me a grandchild <laughs> they don't really care how Amy gets pregnant they just want that girl pregnant yesterday um so Amy to get her parents to back off is now also pretending Fry is her boyfriend and Fry is having to juggle two fake girlfriends for the duration of the cruise. 
which is very, very Three's Company. And if you if you know Three's Company, you may have already thought about that. And then when they bring it up and they reference it, like in that very meta moment of him saying he knows how to handle it because he's watched Three's Company. <laughs> and then he's singing the theme song as if it's going to tell him what to do next. <laughs> that is so <laughs> great. Great. So moment. good. Yeah. Door, waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you see, yeah, you Roper. can see him. He's like, the answer's in here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mr. Roper? Was he the landlord? Yeah. He, and he they was... had to pretend to be dating to get like a discount on the apartment? Yes. Because no. they. Wasn't it that, that the main. No, the male character had to pretend to be gay because otherwise they weren't going to let a man live with two women. That's exactly right. Jinx is right. You could pretend to be gay back then. And what happened was over I mean, and over and not, over again. Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They were actually um, just friends but they were all three heterosexual. And so what would happen is Mr. Roper. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I will say this, the sexuality of that show was so bizarre and so cartoony. Mr. Roper would always come in and inevitably hear them, you know, fixing, uh, I don't know, the shower drain or something. You know, it was, it was always very much something that could be misinterpreted as, as them having sex. And that was the joke. I mean, that was the joke for the entire show was we're going to set up things where this person believes that these people are doing something they're not. And it, it's sexual. Sounds like a really horny show. Is that why you're such a slut? Cause you watched it. <laughs> Me? I, I'm actually not that big of a threes company. Like I didn't, um, <laughs> I thought I didn't, you were going to say I, I'm not that big of a slut. <laughs> oh no. That, that I, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I like Hecklina loved Three's Company, you know, and she grew up to be a rimmer. So, I mean, it probably <laughs> probably did affect her. But yeah, I, I mean, I know what Three's Company is. Here's another question for you, youngins. Did mm-hmm. you get the reference with the bartender? Yeah, that's from the Love Boat. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's oh, it's funny because Futurama is definitely geared towards people mine and Nick's age, but the people writing it are like Peach's age. Right. So they're constantly making references to like 70s television in a show that was made in the early 2000s for people in their, you know, teens and 20s in the early 2000s. So it's 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 a melange. It's a melange. Well, it's like when you watch um, uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons and it's all like Humphrey Bogart references because <laughs> right. it's all old, old fucking men writing. Or like opera, you know. Yeah. You know, what's very funny to me is um, on King of the Hill of all shows, which was a, <laughs> very much a show of its time, you know, early 2000s. They're constantly referencing people like Eartha Kitt and Betty Davis. And I wonder which which um, writer on that show was was gay and working in little Betty Davis references into King of the Hill wherever they could. There's a limbo that contest. Really derailed the conversation. <laughs> The limo contest. Another great plot moment. Okay, here's the thing. Are those is, characters regulars? That's a question I have. This which, would be very characters? confusing if you were coming the, in cold, sorting the, out the, who's the, the, the limbo crew and who's uh, champions. The, the um, guy her, and his wife. Hermes is a regular character. La that's Barbara. Hermes. Okay. And La Barbara's her, the wife or the girlfriend? La Barbara's the wife and she, she comes her. and goes. The limbo contest sets up that Hermes is a retired limbo champion. Yes. Now, this is a plot point for the show, for this episode of the show, but it comes up way more than you think. Oh, really? <laughs> throughout this, throughout the like, what, nine seasons of Futurama, they are constantly bringing us back to the fact that, limbo, uh, that Hermes is a limbo champion. I did. I would not have expected that over they would the find hill. so many ways to bring it back to limboing. In this, in this show. Well, it's a hilarious. I, I loved that part. I love those two characters. I thought it was such a hilarious thing because it's so dumb. It's so random. It is the kind of dumb contest that they would have on a cruise. Like cruise, (laughs) you know, cruises have all these dumb activities that people would never do if they were like on land, you know, like no one would be like, (laughs) okay, I'm going to set my you know, watch to be sure I'm at that limbo contest. <laughs> but on a on a on a cruise ship, they would. They just would, you know. And so I you're love, desperate for anything. Right. Like it, it, and it's all these people who don't know how to socialize. So it's like these 
these sort of forced, you know, social events and things. So uh, that was hilarious to me. I loved the way <laughs> the uh, La Barbara was, you know, bo- both a cheerleader and, you know, definitely taking him down uh, a yeah. peg. Um, and I loved the way they animated the the actual limbo when he had to save the day. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he was still wearing his Olympic costume underneath his yeah. work clothes. <laughs> and the thing with his limboing past, he quit limboing because some little kid um, wanted to be like him and tried to limbo and I guess broke his back to death. Oh, the kid died. Was died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that flashback was like, oh, wow, this is good. You know, I loved that moment. <laughs> Killing a child, you know, in a limbo contest. <laughs> but also the idea that a di- a child could die by limboing, you know? <laughs> well, he, he broke his back. But it, <laughs> later when Hermes says, this is for that little boy limboing in heaven, I'm like, really? He died? <laughs> he died because he limboed too hard? <laughs> yeah, it just cracked and In him. heaven, he can limbo as much as he wants. So that's the happy ending. Because they don't have spines in heaven. No bones in heaven. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> you go <laughs> up to the, the pearly gates. St. Peter's like, check your bones at the door. <laughs> Meanwhile, in hell, the bones are their dollars. Now, um, we've still got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait. No, before we move on. After the limbo contest, we see that the professor is hooking up with the Kajigger lady. And my theory <laughs> I don't is that at the stock saying. market. That's her name. I she know. has a real name, but. This is my theory is at the stock market episode where he says that her apartment smells like poly grip and cat pee after the Titanic incident, he goes and dates her and fucks her a couple of times. And that's why he's been in her apartment. I don't know. Their history seems to be long and convoluted. This is the first um, time they're fucking for sure. Also, the Kajigger lady is like somehow very independently wealthy, but is also a crazy cat lady in a bathrobe <laughs> at all times. And she's future- horny. Yeah, she's horny. horny. She's only got the one eye that can focus on anything. Why? Why is and she she's called voiced the by lady? Because she, she says, says kajigger. kajigger. <laughs> she does. She's like, yeah. what? What's that fancy kajigger you got there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you don't really know her name? No. <laughs> no. You, but she does. She does she's like play comic integral book guy. roles throughout the throughout the <laughs> seasons. Interesting. Um, so. We've still got we've still got the plot of Bender and the Countess de la Rocha um, uh, forming their romance. She fi- finds out that Bender is penniless. Um, <laughs> There's a montage with several direct parodies to Titanic where they like yeah. fuck in the car and he draws her naked. And we get another moment of robot porno just being schematics. <laughs> yeah. And then. There is a moment where he's about to steal her beautiful bracelet and he decides not to because he has real feelings for her. And this is new for Bender. Um, And then she says, beautiful, isn't it? And he says, only 93% as lovely as you. (laughs) And she says, either that's a, (laughs) oh my God, it's one of the best lines. I'm going to mess it up, but I know it's one of the best lines. Either, either that was a computing malfunction. (laughs) Oh God, I already messed it up. Or that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Let's move on. Uh, the rest <laughs> of the crew is escaping. No, we did the door. No, the line I was worried about messing up comes later when she says something like, uh, your sincerity unit. What is, what's the I line? I don't love you referring? because of your money. I love you because of your artificial intelligence and your sincerity simulator. <laughs> your sincerity simulator. <laughs> is an oxymoron because sincerity means there's nothing (laughs) fake about it robots are so pragmatic (laughs) i have to ask you a question that i um thought about did you know that that name um bender is actually a pejorative wow yes so for it's like calling someone a fag Really? Uh, oh, like a gender and, bender? No, it's in England, a bender. So a bit that's like they have all these different names for um, you know, gay people that are really bad. And one of them is bender. It's because you bend over. So when uh... you call when you call someone a bender, it's actually like kind of it's like a bad word. Same thing with they call they say poof or poofter. Like they use all these words that we wouldn't use, which I think are hilarious because to us, like they don't have the sting. But if you're in England and you would call someone a bender, it'd be like like people would gasp you know they also use the word shit stabber 
Mm. I've heard you use that one. Because I love it. You brought that one back. You felt you imported they sh- that. You felt they shut Staba. I mean, people get so creative with the ways they talk down to, to queer people. I do and think so many that of them involved. Is well, named Bender it's because fair enough. he drinks. We a like lot. we pack fudge. All right. And he goes yeah. on benders. <laughs> but I this is an interesting wrinkle. And I bet okay. that it plays differently in the UK. I wonder. We should ask some of our UK friends. Can we get a British person on? Where's Joe Black? Yeah, Joe how about, Black on here. <laughs> how is Joe Black? I think this is this is really what, what we need Joe Black for is to answer this important question. <laughs> okay. Well, coming soon, we'll have Joe Black as a guest. That's been settled just now. You heard it here first, folks. As we all knew, um, the the ship encounters. <laughs> <laughs> the asteroid comet storm and is hit and is going to be destroyed. And Zap's <laughs> Zap solution is we'll just take it over to that empty part of space near that blackish holish thing. <laughs> um, another example. I do like that joke, Peaches. Rated <laughs> out of ten. You know what I liked about it is I was what thinking. Um, oh, I wonder how they're going to simulate the sinking because they're in space. And I so I was already thinking ahead as a writer of parody <laughs> shit um uh, i was like oh i wonder are they just gonna crash and then it's gonna crumble and i thought oh the black hole that's a really smart clever way to do it you know because it, it, it's sort of the most you know um similar thing to sinking i guess if you're in space is being sucked into a black hole yeah uh, as it's crashing i don't recommend moment- it <laughs> There's a moment no. where the Countess de la Roca is like in a burning room and Bender goes in there to rescue her. And then it fills up with water and it seems like it's going to be really scary, but then it just cuts back to them later and they're underwater and it's fine because they're robots and they don't need oxygen. Well, she she turns into like a little she turns into a little boat. Yeah. Hey, yeah. wait a moment. Aren't you a member of the yacht club? <gasps> That's right. I'm a class three yacht. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of good. my favorite things about the robots in this show is the robots can just be or do anything. They have basically, um, they have an endless supply of superpowers that only come into play when they need them. So yes, yeah, she's a yacht somehow. She's a, she's a robot. Who's also a yacht. Um, yachts have <laughs> sails. What's a yacht? There's, I mean, a yacht no, is not, a giant no, no. boat. Yeah. It's a, just I a don't, big boat. I, I don't know. I mean, the joke Am is I thinking of a schooner. The joke doesn't have yeah. to make a huge amount of sense. The point is she's a robot with a propeller in her butt and she can <laughs> she could take them out of there. So many good lines uh, happen in, in these moments. You know, when when they're finally reunited, Bender's like, <laughs> Bender finds her in the burning room. Are you OK? Yes. Luckily, a family broke my fall. <laughs> so she's supposedly crushed an entire family of humans. Then they're reunited. And he says, when I'm with you, it feels like I'm standing in a pool of rising water. <laughs> it's, it's because they are standing in a pool of rising water. She saves them. She gets them out of Where's all the water coming from, by the way? They're in space, but the ship is I think it's because the the room was on fire. There was a sprinkler system that. (laughs) Okay, 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 okay. But we just had to, we had to get that. We We had had to get the flooding scene for one more Titanic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So they're all escaping. Zap Brannigan, like a coward, has made Kiff the captain of the ship because the captain is supposed to go down with the ship. And Zap certainly isn't going to do it himself. Everyone's evacuating the ship. Bender and the Countess are are lagging behind. Last One funny thing, as they're boarding the escape pods, uh, Amy's parents return and they say, we found a eligible bachelor for you. He's a captain and actually introduces Kiff to Amy, which if you're a fan of the series, Peaches, you would see this in future episodes, which I'm sure you'll you'll just binge this right when you're right when you turn off the Zoom, you'll start binging Futurama. Yes. Um, you would see that. Most of the show, Amy's parents are very anti Amy and Kiff being together because they are they get into a serious relationship after this. So it was interesting to see that they instigated it. The archetype of Amy's parents is really just that they she's never going to do anything they want. I'm sure, you know, like we we see in future episodes that they want her to get back with their ex-boyfriend. I'm sure when she was with him they didn't like him they just always want to be the ones making the decisions about amy's life they are overbearing rich parents i don't know anything about that you ever met my mom (laughs) 
stupid. So um, over here. they end up escaping. One of my favorite lines is, you know, they're all in their escape pods. Bender and the Countess jump and, you know, grab hold of the escape pod with the whole crew in it. And they're trying to get away. And Leela goes, we're not we're not flying fast enough. We're two metric tons overweight. And Amy says, well, it isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that was relatable content. <laughs> also, they're both a thousand pounds because I think that's what a metric ton is. Yeah. And yeah, I did. I did think pounds. like, wow, those robots are <laughs> but he's some heavy. Hollow. Well, I guess if you could turn. Uh, yeah, he is hollow. Like he he opened up his chest and he had all those chips in there and they just kind of spilled out and. I there think is, nothing his left. chest is sometimes a closet and sometimes it's full of gears. I don't know, man. <laughs> his his chest is whatever it needs to be in the moment. So the Countess and Bender are hanging off the escape pod. Um, the Countess is about to fall and she tells Bender to go on with his life and to love again. Um, it's like a reverse. It's a reverse what happens in the movie Titanic. Spoilers. Because this thanks. time... Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Then I just love, I just love that they have this dramatic goodbye. The bracelet breaks and she falls into the black hole. And her final line is farewell. (laughs) She sucked in the way she gets sucked in. I love the way she got sucked in. And I liked that they, the bracelet broke because I thought they might go for like a, 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 a simple joke where he just kind of does the thing like you're right you know and just let's go or whatever (laughs) you know what i mean like you know so i was kind of waiting for that but but it was i liked that it was the bracelet actually broke like okay yeah they they were really in love and he wanted to hang on yeah well then though i think it's the the only moment of yeah i mean he can do it two things can be true because when he finds out the bracelet's fake he's of course furious and devastated (laughs) yeah but i do think he had genuine love for her but yeah it's like you know bender's bender so he has genuine love for her he's sad she's gone but i think his brain is also thinking at least i have this heirloom bracelet and i'm gonna get rich off of this and he finds out it's fake and it's just twisting the knife i disagree (laughs) i disagree with what you said you said bender is bender but we've already determined he's in love with the woman bender's not a bender (laughs) in the first draft his name was faggot the robot which was really (laughs) metal fag (laughs) we're in the wrap-up times jinx do you want to ask your little questions that you ask well we always ask our guest of all of the characters you met in the episode who would you most likely bone in real life that is a good question um Oh, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I my predictions. No wrong answers. I'm not. My- uh, I'm not sure. I'll say this. I would. You know, I'd be the first to admit if I found an animated character um, sexually attractive. <laughs> but there was there was no one that I that I actually I like if you put a gun to my head, I, I guess I would say um, the kid who got killed. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no maybe the limbo guy you know. i knew it i knew you were gonna say the yeah. limbo guy yeah. i feel like you and i both would have had a past fling with um zap brannigan um when oh, we maybe when we yeah. drank. in provincetown yes, 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 yeah we both would have fucked him when we were drunk totally. um but i definitely see you settling down with hermes yeah probably you i mean you can't hold a candle to la barbara she is she is a a goddess on earth but um well i would I choose know. i'm I would really choose obsessed her with her in many ways i mean in many ways i probably would choose her just because like i was the most attracted to her yeah yeah she's the hottest yeah nick anyone you're gonna bone from this episode um i guess i'd fuck that uh love boat robot the bartender. Oh, Isaac. I was going to say food. Isaac, the love boat robot. Yeah, he was, he was suave and sexy. And the real Isaac I was very mustache. sexy as well. Yeah. I think I'd probably, um, if it's the like young, hot Leonardo DiCaprio head in a jar, then <laughs> I would probably <laughs> just the head have a fling. Head. Yeah. I mean, there's still plenty you can do. Have you ever seen the reanimator? The, <laughs> the no. what? The reanimator. 
No. Oh my god, it's a great eighties gore movie. But the, but basically, that part of the reanimation is a guy who his head is severed, so his body's like carrying around his head. And there's this whole <laughs> sequence where he's this woman's on a table and her legs are open, and so you see the guy like putting his head between <laughs> her legs. Oh my god! <laughs> it's I'll amazing. Watch this. It's spooky season as we're recording this. I oh, you watch have this. to watch the reanimator and report back to me. Um peaches yeah now that you've seen an episode of futurama would you watch more futurama in the future i would actually for sure i'm not just saying that i i really enjoyed it i found it comforting it is kind of comforting isn't it yeah it it reminds us of what we thought the future was going to be versus what we now know the future is going to be. <laughs> that which may, is and just maybe a that, burning that's actually... inferno hell on earth while all the billionaires escape to space. Um, I guess that's one thing. That's one thing Futurama got right. All the billionaires go and colonize Mars because they don't give a fuck about the rest of humanity that they screwed over. I am so angry about billionaires planning to go to space. I'm so fucking angry about it because the planet is dying because of capitalism and fucking these CEOs who have like fucked over the planet for capital gain. And now they're just going to take the money that they got by killing the planet and fucking go go and leave humanity behind to die on the planet that their companies destroyed while they go fucking colonize space. This is the smiley face speech. You know, man? (laughs) With a capital. Someone needs to start the slow clap. 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 Um, (laughs) Peaches. As we said, um, uh, you know, it's probably too late by the time this episode airs for people to see this year's haunt, but yes. you do it annually at the San Francisco Mint. Um, uh, make your plans ahead of time to go see Peaches Christ's interactive haunted house theatrical experience at the San Francisco Mint. It's called Terror Vault. Every sh- every year um, she concocts a new premise and and it's really a hell of a lot of fun. And you can you can participate as much as you want. You can be someone who just walks through and just watches or someone who gets felt up by a naked Nick Sahoya. Um, <laughs> but more important than promoting Terra Vault, because you all are a podcast um, and you're a nerd podcast and you're yes. focusing on a nerdy TV show. If you also like nerdy cult movies, you should check out Midnight Mass which is my other podcast, which Nick is going to be on someday soon. And Jinx oh, has already been, Jinx has already been on. So, oh, um, so yes, we, Jinx you know, first. well, oh. of course, I mean, I, I guess I was in the tube, so it's not really your fault. Get over it. And enough about the tube. Also, I, I don't even, I don't really, it, with I, Jinx, I have to say with Jinx, it's a lot easier as far as me knowing what, in fact, we have a new episode coming out that I would love to have had her back on for, um, because I'm very, very well aware of what her favorite cult movies are, but I'm not sure that I'm as well aware of Nick. Like if, when I think Nick's a Hoya I don't, or anything, I don't know what your favorite cult movies are. So you gotta, you gotta think about it and tell me. Peaches, where can everyone follow you on social media? Friday the 13th part seven is one of <laughs> the funniest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, I, I, you know, anywhere, uh, uh, social media, admittedly, my TikTok is very, very weak. I need help there. I need a young but person your to help handle, me. Your handle, your handle. Well, is... uh, they're different. So like, but the thing is, is I, I'm, I'm verified. So it shouldn't be that hard. You know, uh, I'm verified on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So it's, yeah, the, but I have just, different handles. Just make sure you're finding peaches Christ and, um, not peaches, the, um, the, the singer, the, the fucking singer, peaches. dyke pop star stole my name. <laughs> <laughs> She's not even a lesbian. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I know. I mean, I, I and you know, I actually really, really, really love her, and we've worked together. So I say that all tongue in cheek. Thank you so much for being all our right. guest, Peaches Christ. Um, this has been I'm Forty Percent Podcast, and you can listen and subscribe wherever you get your pod on. And we'll see you next Monday with episode two of season two of Futurama. Wow, 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 wow,